Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1972 Ford Maverick. Up front is a 4.1 liter inline six and down below is a three speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Ford Maverick because I've never driven an older Maverick like this. Now, if you are familiar with modern vehicles, Ford's new small pickup truck is named the Maverick. However, it shares absolutely no connection to this vehicle at all. It's just a name to save copyright money. And so today we're gonna be driving the real Ford Maverick. But if you would like to submit your own vehicle, you can head on over to my website, zachpredo.com slash submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. It takes under a minute to fill out and I come out to you. But let's get back to that 250 inline six under the hood. I know cubic inches is the way to go with these engines, but I always say liters just to measure it up against every car that I drive. This is the 250. Now, there were several engines offered here in the Maverick along with a V8, but this is the more civilian, more normal, more regular engine that was offered. And what it is is a workhorse. It might not be the fastest, craziest, quickest vehicle ever made by Henry himself, but it actually is really smooth once it gets going. Starting, it doesn't like to start, but, you know, it's also over 50 years old you know, but actually getting it up to speed and driving it, it's a pretty smooth engine, all things considered. And I've actually really enjoyed that. Now, like I said, paired to it is an automatic transmission. Nothing really groundbreaking here, of course, which is the way to go. But for an in-town cruiser like this vehicle is, I don't really mind. I love the normalcy of this particular Maverick. And so the auto really helps that out. Last but not least, the Ford Maverick is rear wheel drive with manual brakes. How does it feel to drive a Ford Maverick from 1972? Feels very normal. It still does have some 70s car quirks, but the steering isn't nearly as overboosted as it is in other Ford or even just regular products from the 1970s. A lot of 1970s cars have very, very overly light steering. Well, that's not the case here in the Maverick, and I'm actually really happy to feel that. Steering feels relatively tight, too, for a 70s car. Visibility is wonderful because I don't have big, chunky A-pillars. And hey, I got the AC cranked in here. I'm having a good day, and that's all thank you to the Maverick. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two gauges. Off to the left is my fuel and warning lights, and off to the right is my speedometer. On the steering wheel, I do get a little badge. This is still the era where Ford was doing distinct badging for their different models, and so this is the Mavericks badge. I love that little wreath down at the bottom, but it's just a two-spoke steering wheel, nice and 70s there. And off to the left, I have my lights, wipers, washers, and my climate controls. As I've been learning recently, the 70s loved hiding the climate controls off to the left, and that's true here in the Maverick as well. Moving out of the door, we have manual mirrors, manual windows, and our latch to get in and out. Moving into the center, we do get two climate control vents, our ashtray and cigarette lighter, our radio, and off to the right, you do get this very large shelf. You'll also find the fasten seatbelt sign down here. They really didn't care to tell you because they basically hid it under the dash. And then we have the sport lamps on and off. Love that little touch. Then we do have a center console. Now this center console is aftermarket. A previous owner added it. So this is not original to the Maverick. However, it actually does pass the big friggin' bottle test, but it's not original, so it doesn't count towards the Maverick, but definitely cool to see. But then we don't have anything between the seats. The seats are very comfortable. This is the original interior, which is wonderful. And I have been really, really enjoying it. And this does have very early seat belts. So they actually extend down from the roof. They're not auto retractable like we see here today, or even that we saw towards the end of the seventies. So interesting to see that. I also drove a 1970 Impala that had the same setup. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 1972 Ford Maverick. And this is kind of a touchy subject because as I'll talk about later, this is not the preferred body style of the Maverick, but we're in the back seat. It's actually my preferred body style. I love four doors. So sitting back here, my knees aren't hitting the seat in front of me. My head isn't hitting the ceiling. I'm very comfortable. These seats are nice and plush. I don't get a center console or anything like that. I only have lap belts, but I'm in the back of a Ford Maverick and I 
really like it. I could just imagine growing up back here and getting driven to your first day of school, September of 1973. Your mom drops you off in her new Maverick or your dad picks you up from soccer practice in his new Maverick. I mean, that's just so cool to me. I, I love looking around and seeing that and also feeling that as well. The nostalgia really reigns in when I get in the back seat because it's where most of us grew up. So let's hop out. We'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Ford Maverick, circle key or round key for the trunk, square key for the doors and ignition. Very interesting. So circle key right in here, pop it up like that. And there you go. You get this very, very typical Ford liner. I've seen this in a couple of vehicles I've reviewed. Absolutely love that. Spare tire, we do get some diagrams and such back there. I love, you can see that headlight looks fantastic and really really cool how original this vehicle is i absolutely love that about this ford maverick now we gotta talk about the looks and i truly love the look of the maverick i think it looks special in its own right the taillights definitely look like late 60s camaro taillights and overall it looks athletic and it doesn't look like a giant barge like a lot of other products from the 1970s, like that Impala that I mentioned, or the Continental, or the Chrysler Cordoba slash Dodge Magnum that I drove. All of these vehicles are just so large. It's nice to actually drive one that sort of has agility to it. It's not weighed down by its haunches. This actually feels really nice and looks really nice. And I love that about the exterior. Two more things about the exterior. It does have a vinyl roof, which I love. However, that vinyl actually carries onto the side trim, which is very unique. I haven't seen this before on a car. It's actually a textured side trim. Very, very strange. This particular one is finished in Wimbledon white, but there were other colors like Freudian gilt, thanks of vermilion and anti-established mint. Very fun colors from the Ford Motor Company in 72. However, with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving a 1972 Ford Maverick? Well, I actually really, really love this experience. It doesn't drive like as much of an old car as I was expecting. You can clearly tell the advancements that were made between the 60s and the 70s. Now, you do have those manual brakes, which you nearly have to stand on to get to work. And coming around a corner here, this is kind of a tight, twisty road. Yeah, I sort of feel like I'm gonna slide off a cliff in the opposite direction. But beyond that, I have air conditioning. It's not too loud. I have seat belts. I have a radio. I have pretty decent amenities in here. And what's always coolest to me, my favorite thing about driving vehicles like this is that this was a normal car. Maybe your mom growing up had a Ford Maverick. Maybe your uncle did and he would show up and slip you five bucks. Maybe you had a teacher, professor, doctor, banker, best friend that had a Maverick back in the era because these were normal cars for normal people. And I know that might sound a little outlandish or annoying, but these cars weren't really purposefully saved. Yes, there is a Maverick following, but specifically the four door, because the four door is looked down upon by most Maverick people because it's less sporty, quote unquote. But I love it. I love the honest working class feel of a four door Maverick. That's why I love driving the 67 four door Belvedere or the four door Impala, because this was meant for families. This is where memories were made. And that is what makes this vehicle so special, is how unspecial it was back in its era. You saw these all the time. You saw these parked at the restaurant restaurants and five and dimes and this, that, and the other, but now you don't. Well, today I've been given the privilege to show this car to you and to show the world this very clean, unmodified 1972 Ford Maverick. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Mike for letting me take out his Ford Maverick. I was so excited to do this review because you just don't see these anymore. And I had driven a bunch of the newer Mavericks for new reviews sent to me from corporate Ford. And they're great too. They're good trucks. But this is the original. When you mention the Ford Maverick to anyone over the age of 30, this is what they think of. And so I'm so privileged to be able to show this to you today. And that is all thank you to Mike. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.